In this one I'll be talking about some camera tricks that might help you control your camera a little more easily. Here's a summary of what we'll talk about. Each topic will have its own timestamp, so you can skip around if you want to do that. First we'll look at camera display options like overlays, focal length, and shifting. Then we'll talk about creating a pivot point so you can easily orbit around objects. I'll show you how to track your camera to moving objects and how you can switch focus from one object to another. We'll cover auto keying for an easy way to create a handheld look. I'll quickly go over how to make a dolly zoom effect like this, how to add camera shake, and last I'll show you how to switch from one camera to another. Before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to all those who downloaded things from my Gumroad shop recently. Until I set up a Patreon account, Gumroad is the best way to show your support. So if you like my content, take a look around the shop. Some of my stuff over there is free. Alright, let's get started. So here we are in Blender 2.93. Um, this should work in a lot of the previous versions of Blender though, so the version number doesn't matter too much. You can say you have a scene set up. You're going to want to make sure you have a camera if you're following along and something to focus on. And you can say I also have these uh, move gizmos to work with. And if you want those two, you can just go up here to the gizmos option and click the drop down and set this to move. You can see so it adds those arrows for you. And also you can see up here I have a second viewport that's always looking through the camera. So you can see what the camera is seeing as I move it around like that. Okay, so first we'll talk about some display options. So what you wanna do is just click on your camera and you can see down here, uh, we have a little camera button. It's called object data properties. You can click on that and you can see we have a bunch of options here like focal length. You can see if I turn this down, you're getting kind of a more like wide angle lens effect. You can change this to orthographic and panoramic. Panoramic is something that only works with cycles right now, I believe, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then we have shifting and clipping, which I'll talk about shortly. You can see we have depth of field, all that. Um, under viewport display, uh, if you set this to limits, this is basically used for like depth of field. You can see when I change the focus distance, this is going to move also. And we have these other options also, just like, you know, how big your camera looks visually. And this other one called Passepart2, I believe is how you pronounce it. And when you look through your camera with zero, you can see when you turn it down, um, you can see outside of your frame. I like to turn this all the way up. That's just a personal preference. And we also have composition guides if you want overlays like that. Something to like reference when you're lining up shots for composition and stuff. All right, so let's talk a little about shifting and what that does. So I'm just going to set up a shot here. I'm just trying to get this to a place where I think the perspective is looking good. So say for instance, I like the way this is looking right now in terms of perspective, but I want the focus instead of being in the center to be off to the side a little. So if you move your camera like this, um, you can see the perspective is, is changing as I'm moving this. So if you don't want the perspective to change, that's where shift would come in handy. You can see I can move this and none of the perspective is shifting. This is something I think works better for still shots. I don't usually use this while animating, but you can, you can experiment with it. And you can also go up and down too, if you want. So clipping can be easily explained by um, setting your focal length pretty small and trying to zoom in close to another object. So to zoom in, I'm just going to hit G and then Z twice to move along the local Z axis like that. And you can see when I zoom in, if I get too close, things start to get cut off. Um, and that's because of this clipping distance right here. So you can just make this clip start a smaller number. And basically this is saying anything closer than this distance, just get rid of it basically. So if I set this to something else like 0 0.05, you can see now it's not getting cut off. And you can see what's happening if you just move that slowly. And this also works for um, the clipping end right here. If you make this smaller, you can see it starts getting rid of background objects at a certain point like that. So next we'll talk about making a pivot point. So when I first started Blender, basically what I was trying to do was make characters and then make a camera that revolves around it or orbits around it, kind of like a turntable. Um, and that's pretty hard to just move your camera around like this and have it always be focused on your character and have it actually be like a circular path. So the easiest way I found out to do this and just a, a nice way to control your camera in general is with a pivot point. So usually what I do is uh, add in an empty with shift A, and it can be any of these things, but I like to use a plane axis like this. And then I'm just going to reset the location of our camera right here with alt G. And I'm just gonna pull it back a little so it's pointing directly at our, uh, at our empty right here. Then you just wanna select your camera, shift select your empty right here, and control P to parent like that. So now you can see when you move the empty around, the camera is following. And you can also rotate it 
and it will just pivot around that empty. So if I wanted to rotate around this lizard, I would basically just set this to where I want to revolve around. So I'll say just like around the head, something like that. And I can just rotate this on the Z axis. And you can see it's revolving around in a circular path now, like that. Uh, one cool thing about using a pivot point like this is if you scale the empty up and down, it basically just makes the camera zoom in and out, which makes it a little easier to control while you're actually uh, looking through your camera. You can also use this for depth of field too. So if you select your camera and turn depth of field on right here, and I'll just make it something really shallow. I'll change the f-stop to like point to 0.5. You can set your focus object to that empty. So you can use this for zooming in and stuff, and you know that wherever the empty is, is going to be in focus. And so that's an easier way to control depth of field too. So next we'll talk about tracking objects, which is basically just a constraint that you can add to your camera. So um, to do this, you don't need to have a pivot point, but it will also work if you do have one. So having a pivot point doesn't really matter too much for this. Basically what you want to do is just select your camera and go over here to object constraint properties like that. And the ones that I'm looking for are under this tracking section right here. So uh, the one that I like to use is called damped track, but you could also use locked track or track to and they all do very similar things. So I'm just going to choose damped track. So I'm looking through my camera now and I'm just going to select this car and you can see it's uh, it's kind of broken now. Basically what I need to do is just um, set this to negative Z right here and it should work fine. If it doesn't, you just want to experiment seeing which one actually follows it. So now when we're looking through, you can see that it's pointing at our car and when I press play, you can see when it animates, it will continue to follow it like that. So now our camera is just always going to be pointing at this car. And if we want it to not be pointing at the car, we can basically just turn the influence off and it'll just go back to where it was looking before like that. So this is really useful for um, moving cameras and moving objects. So if I move my camera, you can watch up here to see what the camera is seeing. When I move my camera, you can see it's going to continue looking at the car like that. You can see I have a few other cars that I set up to animate. So I'm just going to select the camera and change the target to one of these other cars. So I'll set it to this one right here. And when we look through, you can see that it's just going to follow the car like that. If you want to switch your focus from one object to another, you can use um, a few different constraints at the same time. So I'll just add um, a second constraint in and make sure that uh, the track axis is the same for both of those and I'm just going to select this other car right here. And basically what you need to know about this is that the one on the bottom is going to override uh, all of the other ones. So if I turn the influence down all the way, now it's using this one and it's going to be focusing on this car right here. So this makes a little more sense when it's in motion. If I want the focus to switch from this object to the other, I can just turn the influence down like that and now it's switched. And you can animate these too. So if you don't want your camera to rotate to look at an object, but instead just like follow it, copying the location, instead of using a tracking constraint, I would use the copy location constraint. You can use this directly on your camera right here, but I usually like to use it with a pivot point. So you can select your pivot point and choose the copy location constraint, and then just select your target. So I'll select this white car right here. So you can see that it's not rotating at all to follow it. It's just um, copying the location. And if you try to move it around, it won't really work unless you click this offset button. And now you can see it's offset, but it's still copying it. And if you want it to be exactly where it is, you can just uh, Alt G to reset the location. And you know, if you want this to be offset a little for a different composition, um, that's an easy way to set this up, but still have it follow. So this will always be on the side of the screen if you do it like this. You could also parent your pivot point directly to your object. And I usually do without inverse, so it snaps directly to it. But you can see when we do this, it's going to rotate with it also. Um, this is a cool effect, but you know you might not really want this. There's also a child of constraint, which basically does the same thing, except it lets you change the influence so you can turn it on or off like that. So next I'll explain auto keying. And for this, I'm just gonna delete our pivot point right here, just because I think it's gonna be a little easier. So to use auto keying, you wanna make sure that you have your timeline open right here. 
and there's this option right here. It looks like a little record button and that's called auto keying. And if you set that and hit play and move one of your objects around with G, you can see that it starts inserting keyframes down at the bottom every time you move it. And even when it's stopped and you move it, it'll set a keyframe right there too. So it's basically just recording your actions without uh, you having to manually insert keyframes. And there's also this other option. Uh, if you hit zero to look through your camera and hit, then hit uh, shift and back tick, um, you can look through your camera and move around kind of like a first person game like this. You can see down at the very bottom, it uh, tells you all of the other shortcuts you need. So W, A, S, and D is to move around like that. Uh, Q and E is to move up and down. And you can toggle gravity by hitting tab like that. And that makes it so um, you won't go through the floor if there is an object right there. Oh yeah, and also if you hit right click at any point, it'll just reset the camera. So I'm going to go back to frame one right here and hit space bar and then immediately go into that first person mode and then start moving around. And you can see it's logging all of the keyframes right there and basically just recording. And when I've gotten what I wanted to get, you can just left click and you can see when it plays back again, um, it's just doing the same motion that we were just doing. So when you got everything you want to get, you can just turn off auto keying so you don't accidentally insert more keyframes. And you can see it's kind of rough, it's kind of shaky. If you want it to be a little smoother, um, what you can do is open up the graph editor. You can do that over here, or you can just hover on your uh, timeline and hit control tab, and that'll open up the graph editor. So you can see that these are all the keyframes that were made. What you want to do to smooth them out is just hit A to select everything, and you can go to key right here. And we have this smooth keys option at the top, and you can see that the shortcut for that is Alt-O. So over here, I'm just going to select everything and hit Alt-O, and you can see that it's going to start smoothing things out like that. And if we play it back, it'll be a little smoother now. So if you're used to playing first person video games, this is going to be an easy way for you to record camera movement and get kind of like a handheld look. So next I'll show you how to make a dolly zoom effect. Some people call it the Hitchcock zoom also. For this, it's a lot easier if you do have a pivot point set up, so make sure you have a pivot point if you're trying to do this. Basically what we're going to do is change the focal length of our camera while we zoom in or out. So I'm just going to turn our focal length down pretty low to like 10, like that. And just look through your camera and select your pivot point and zoom in until you get to a point that you think is good. And once you get here, you just want to insert some keyframes. So go to your timeline or dope sheet and go to the first frame. And I'm just going to uh, insert a keyframe for the scale right here. And then you want to select your camera right here and also insert a keyframe for the focal length. Then you can move to a later frame. So I'll go to like frame 100 and I'm just going to change the focal length from 10 to 50. So this is multiplying by five, remember that. And then insert a keyframe there. And then back on your pivot point, you can basically just hit S to scale and five. So this is multiplying the scale by five now also. And then you can insert another keyframe there. And that is it. We have our dolly zoom effect like that. And you can see that the focal point is basically staying the same. So I recommend using a pivot point for this because you can pretty much just scale the focal length and the pivot point up by the same amount and it seems to work out every time for me. If you're not using a pivot point, you're going to have to figure out how far away to move your camera to keep the same visual distance. And I find it's just a lot easier to use a pivot point. Okay, so for the next one, I'm going to show you how to add some camera shake. So you can add camera shake to your empty, but I usually like to add it to my camera directly instead. So select your camera, you can do that over here in the outliner, and then hit N on your viewport and it'll open up the side panel right here. And you just want to figure out which axis you want to move your camera on. So usually what I do is add it to the X rotation or the Z uh, location like that. You just want to insert a, a single keyframe on whatever axis. And you can see down here in my dope sheet, um, we just have one keyframe now. And you want to switch over to the graph editor. So in the graph editor, just select that keyframe that you just made and you want to open up the side panel over here. So you can either just drag it open like that or you can hit N by hovering over right here and it'll just open up. Then on the edge, you can see we have a modifiers option. Just make sure you click that 
and the one that you're going to add is called noise. So you can see now when we play it, it's shaking all over the place and it's a little too much. So you can change the strength, you can just turn that down. I usually set it to something a little lower. You want to keep it subtle, so maybe like 0.1, something like that. But it's jittering really fast too, so you can change the scale of it. And you can see in the graph editor as you change your scale up what's happening. It's just basically stretching it apart and making each movement a little smoother and more subtle, just a little slower. And so this is a quick way to add some camera shake. And you can also change the influence if you want it to uh, come in and go away. So next I'll show you how to switch cameras. So obviously for this you're going to need more than one camera. I'm just going to shift A and add in a second one. And you can just drag this wherever you want. And if you want to just look through your camera and you don't want it to switch back and forth, but you just want to change which camera you're using. So you can just find it over here in the outliner. I just clicked on it so you can see that's the one we want to switch to. And just hit this drop down arrow. And right here, uh, you can just click that one. And you can see now that it's looking through that one. So this is a quick way to just uh, switch which camera you're using. Um, this isn't animating which camera is using, it's just changing like which one is actually being used. So I'm just going to set this one up now and add another empty for a pivot point, stuff like that. So I have my camera motion set up for both of my cameras, and I'm just going to switch back to my first camera right here. So now I'm going to set up animating the camera switching. So basically what you want to do over in your timeline is, um, is insert some markers where you want the cameras to change. So to do that, you can either go to marker right here and add marker, or you can just hit M. So I'm going to hit M just on the first frame right here. And that's going to be where our first camera is. That's where it starts and where we want it to switch. So I'm just going to look through my camera and figure out where I want it to switch. So maybe around frame 100, we can add another marker right here. And basically you just want to go over the marker now make sure your camera is selected and while hovering over your marker you can hit Control b and that's going to make the camera switch at that point so then we go to this next marker which is frame 100 select your camera hover over your marker and hit Control b so now you can see once it gets to frame 100 it'll switch like that it's also worth noting that your uh, cameras can have different settings. So you can see the past part two is different here than on our first one. So if you wanted them to be the same, you can, um, you can just select your two cameras like that and hit control L and link object data like that. And it'll copy all of the, um, the properties I believe over here. And that's how you can switch between two cameras. And you can basically just keep going back and forth add however, however many cameras you want to. And if you don't want to remember the shortcuts for this, you can find all of these in the menu over here. So to add a marker, there's the option right here. And you can see up here, we have our bind camera to markers uh, option also. So if you ever forget, you can just find them right in this menu right here. All right, that's it for this one. If there are other camera tips you think people should know about, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.